Hello, my name is Alexis Scott, and I am talking about my five stories that I read. Um, overall, I found I was looking for um, conflict. So as I was going through, I was looking for the different conflicts, and conflict can occur between two different characters or multiple characters that clash, or just a character having an internal issue. Um, so starting with the first uh, story, from Alexi Sherman, uh, it's called Crazy Horse Dreams. We follow the um, main character named Victor as he's at a powwow. And as he's at the powwow, there is a woman who seems to have found interest in him. And immediately um, he thinks that um, he is not what this woman is desiring. Um, the woman is not going to be happy with him, um, but she is like, no, like I'm gonna be happy with you. Um, and as the night goes on, they get to a point where they're alone, and um, the woman, ha there's this tension between them towards like the end of the story, where as they lay together, the woman expresses how he is not a crazy horse. Um, so basically, he is not what she was desiring. Um, and Victor gets very um, frustrated at this, because he told her that, you know, I am not what you are desiring, I am not what you are wanting. Um, so he ends up storming out, saying you are nothing, you are not important, you're nothing important to her. Um, and he's frustrated at the fact that he isn't, he will never um, live up to this expectation of being a crazy horse. Um, and that he wished he could be that way. And the conflict within the story just, it basically becomes, it comes from, <laughs> Victor and the woman. So that's where the conflict comes from um, with him not being the woman I was hoping for, leading into an argument, a very heated argument between the two characters, leaving the main character alone, isolated and frustrated. And that's how it ends. Um, so continuing to the next one, which is still Alexi Sherman, is a story called Family Portrait. Now this conflict is is more with the family and mostly with the parents. So it's between the narrator and the parents, mainly the mother. Um, there's a sense of loneliness and tension within the family. And it starts with the narrator. Um, the, re the narrator is trying to remember, is having a recollection of the past things that happened to him. And he first thinks about how his sisters would scrape food that was dropped out of plates um, into a pile and would scrape it into their mouths. Um, and this was to show how hungry they were, but the mother would strongly disagree and would tell her that they were not hungry and that this is not true. Um, the, the family would also tell him stories about himself from the past that he didn't remember, but he would accept it. So they would tell him that something happened and he would, he was like, I don't remember that happening to me at all, but I'm going to accept it because you told me that it happened. Um, one of the examples is how they would fight about the fact if he was having seizures or if he was dancing. So um, there was, the mother was saying that he's just dancing, he's just dancing, but the father is like, no, he is having seizures, he's in trouble. Um, and the mother at some point even threw him out into the cold and told him that she would not let him back in until he told her that um, he would love her even when she's old. Um, so he'd be out in nothing but his underwear in the cold and would not let him in. So it's, it's safe to say that the conflict is between the narrator and the parents, most specifically the mother because of all the issues that they had and the things that he's trying to remember but they're lying to him about. Um, and we could tell that he has a better relationship with his father because towards the end, he forgives his father. He has a sense of forgiveness with his father. Um, so a lot of it, it's with the parents in general, but you could tell that a lot of the tension comes from the mother towards the narrator. So that is where a lot of that conflict, my recording stopped. Um, as I was saying, that's where a lot of the conflict had built up over time, leading to where they were. The next story is called Swallowing Ice by Nana Boateng. 
sorry if I say that wrong. Um, I found that the conflict in this one was definitely more personal, more internal. Um, so the woman that we follow writes in a journal under the name Vivian Quack, and she has this routine. She never leaves her apartment, and she always has a certain routine that she follows. And she even knows the routine of her cat, Max, who she is obsessed with. She is overly obsessive with this cat. She does everything, and I mean everything, with this cat. So a lot of things she does revolves around him. Um, and she wouldn't go out. She listened to music very loud and wouldn't do the things that she needed. And it got to the point where the landlady would come in and say, turn down the music. You need to do this. You need to sweep all the leaves. Like, what are you doing? You're not doing anything. If you died, no one would know. Um, so basically saying that she is non-existent in this area because she doesn't do anything. She just is in there with her cat. And this continues, um, this whole routine, this, this cycle continues until um one day the landlady comes up to her and tells her that her cat max was found dead she doesn't believe it of course um she takes the dead cat puts it in her room and keeps it there um and she's like it's the cat's not dead the cat's gonna come back and when the cat doesn't come back she starts to search she searches online for ways to resurrect the cat and there's people telling her the cat's not coming back you can't resurrect a cat let the cat rest let the cat be dead um she still didn't you know want to listen she started having this thing in her mind saying that the cat will come back the cat will come back and i want to be there when it comes back so she put the cat in the freezer with the ice and every morning she goes in there for breakfast grabs ice and eats it from the same place that the cat is in. So the decomposing cat is in the freezer. Um, and she still waits for it to come back. So a lot of this conflict in this story comes from within this fact that she doesn't want to um, realize that, you know, the stuff is happening, um, things are going on around me, it's not just what's going on here. And also, you know, just, just accepting the fact that the cat or that she lost something. Um, so she has this conflict and she just does not want to give it up. Um, so that is basically where that comes from with that story. So the next one is called The In Inconvenient Dead by James Bradley. Um, with this story, there's an overall conflict with the town about the dead coming back to life. So people who are dead are actually coming back to life. Um, but with this story, we follow a man specifically named Dane, who is one of those people who came back to life. Um, and Dane has this fear that whatever is keeping him alive is going to disappear. And as he is, you know, alive but dead, um, he also fears that his former life is going to slip from him. That whatever we used to be is it's not the same. He might be alive physically but it's it's not the same his former life is it's gonna be gone soon and even his friend toby saw this and he felt like he was no longer a part of the life that he once lived before and there were as he you know he's working there are many people who would react to him putting their hands over their hearts and over their mouths and talking about how he was dead but he was alive because it was still a thing going around around the world and he told himself he realized that you know the old dane the one that was alive would react to this but i'm not he was saying that he's losing that sense of what he used to be and he no longer notices it and he was distant and he wouldn't talk anymore he was um becoming distant of himself and you know the, the people who weren't immediately you know interacting with him still thought he was dead um he didn't want to tell anybody he watched on facebook how people would continue to grieve over him and he just didn't want anybody to know um he was detached he, he felt attached and he wanted to leave so he decided to leave and his friend Toby is like, why? Like, wh what do, do you need to talk to somebody? I'm here to talk. And Dane just said, are you willing to listen? And 
he, Toby just says, I'm sorry. And he does end up leaving. And Toby also realizes that Dane is not himself anymore. And he never will be. He will never be how he used to be. And they both realize that around the same time. So the overall conflict, you know, there's the conflict of people coming back to life. Um, but with Dane, he has this conflict within himself. And there's a conflict with Toby with how he's losing how he used to be. He is never going to be the same. And he's slipping away from this life that he used to know. So this conflict is he is afraid to become distant and lose what he had as he's losing it. If that makes sense. Um, but yeah, with this last story, it's called What Do You Know About Friends by Lily Brett. Um, and this conflict was more with the main character, Miss Bensky, and everybody else. Since she was young, she would call people pigs for everything that they did. She would call people who were greedy pigs, who ate a lot pigs. There was a friend whose like father died and in the ghetto and she called him a pig for it. So she was calling everyone all of these names um, since the beginning. And she ended up losing losing that friend, being not like no longer being friends anymore. And like, no matter the circumstance, she called them pigs, and she would refuse to call anyone a friend, um, because she said that you can only trust your family. I will not call people friends. So she would continue to have these hurtful words and these hurtful things that she would say to other people, and she, like, would dismiss anybody she saw as not intelligent. So she was accepted into the school, and so anybody who was considered not intelligent, she would blow up and talk about them behind their back and express how they weren't intelligent. Um, and this started going around. And there, it this breaking point with it was when she got a low grade on a paper and would go to the tutor and blamed it on him. So she was like, you know, I, you know, I got into the school. This is important to me. Why are you failing my paper so she was saying why did you write it so that i would fail um so she would blame that on the tutor because she didn't do her work um and in the end she ended up leaving the school and the school said you know she leaves wiser than she was here um showing that you know it won't doesn't go her way and that you know she has to take the low grades and stuff like that that she did. So a lot of this is her and everyone around her. She doesn't realize the things that she's causing and um, you know, all of these relationships that she's destroying because of the things that she would do. So she herself was kind of the conflict with everyone um, and just, by the end of it, she we didn't really, you know, see her change, but she ended up leaving and kind of, in a way, like, realizing that she, what she did kind of led her to that. But we really don't have a conclusion of her changing. Um, it's just the fact that she left and the school believes that she left wiser than she was when she was at the school. So I believe that the conflict within that was herself with other people. So those are my five stories. And a lot of them I feel connect with the internal conflict. And even with the ones that had conflict with someone else, there was still this sense of internal conflict. Like for example, with Victor, how there was the conflict with them. The, the two people, those were the conflicts, but then there was this internal conflict of him not being what she desired. Him feeling he's not enough, and then later on wishing that he was that crazy horse. So even through these different conflicts, there was still this connection of them having this internal issue um, throughout the story. So yeah, those are my five stories. I hope you find them interesting, like I did.